school. This section will be on trading management and trading um, psychology, right? So we are going to discuss how you can actually compound your account, how you can grow your account. So I will make this also public. Though we're still going to have series of sec uh, sections on this, but I want to make this in a way that uh, other uh, people in the public can also have access to this content and uh, it should help them, right? So this is what we really want to really look into. So this is our template, right? This is not, um, we ask um, Matthew to help us to re-edit this in terms of probably some terms and conditions, I mean, based on the rules that we're actually looking out for. Well, I, I can't actually see anything that is out of place on this, so we're going to work with this also. So I'll use this to explain the point of the LPC concept, then how this trading plan can also work for you, then also um, in terms of your trading management and the likes. Okay, now the first thing I'm actually going to talk about is, um, um, is on psychology. Now, what is psychology? There are some important things to take note of, all right, when you're actually talking about um, traders' uh, psychology, their perception, their emotions in terms of trading, right, which is actually very, very important thing to take note of. Now, the, the, the worst enemy of a trader will be his emotion, right? His emotion, and right, and the emotion can actually be divided into two, right it can be divided into two number one right we have fear right and number two we have excitement right excitement now so i'm going to explain how this can actually influence every other uh trading psychology such as um number one such as your confidence all right confidence um sorry uh, your confidence number two um over trading over trading right and number three uh we have fear also at the same time we can have fear then um, let me just ask uh let me just add the fear also so these are the major uh stuff to really consider but um Okay, so um, just like what I was saying, right, we have um, this uh, confidence of our trading and fear. Actually, uh, during the course of this training, I'm still going to mention some other concept of this. This is actually what we're going to look, really look into. But uh, what I want to focus on today is the part of the emotion and how it can actually interfere with this. Whereby when you have confidence uh, over trading and fear, then all those are for more fear of missing out, then uh, fear of uh, taking a trade too, all those things actually what we're going to discuss on that, on that fear. So how can these um, two aspects of the emotion really influence a man in trading? Now, fear. Now, how does fear actually emerge? Now, number one, how, how do you begin to be afraid of taking a trade or probably fear of missing out and all those things? Number one is that when you have taken so many trades, I mean, probably you have been trading, then all the trades you've been taking, they've been actually going into your stop loss and they're actually stopping you out. So you will be afraid of taking the next kind of a trade. And one thing about trading is that you don't know the, the aspect of the trade, I mean, the pair or that particular trade that you're going to take that is going to be a win because Trading is not 100%, it's not 100% guarantee, right? It is actually um, um, just a game of probability. So is it that you take this and this will work out and well, the trade you might actually say that this will not work out, that is the trade that will work out. And the one you've already planned so well that, okay, okay this is what will, um, this is what will play out so effectively, but at the end of the day, you just discover that this is not working out again. So those things might actually create a, a fear into your heart. Probably you decide that, oh, you just you just have it in your mind that, oh, if I if I plan this trade well, then uh, at the end of the day, this trade will not work out as planned, 
right? So that's actually the aspect of fear. So because of um, uh, the series of losses that you've taken on on on, on your trading uh, as on your trading skill or your trading career, then you're actually afraid to take the next kind of a trade. Now, so this fear, just like what I, I said in in in, um, in relation with this particular aspect, the fear that shows you might actually be having a fear of missing out, which is what we have as FOMO, right? You just think that okay, this particular fear is that oh, you might be missing out in a particular pair, probably, I mean, a particular trade. Probably you just see a, a very long bullish candle and you've been, you actually have a plan to buy that pair, right? To, to actually buy that pair. But this pair is yet to get to your zone, right? Is there to get to your zone. You just jump into that trade without doing a further research, right? You don't do a further analysis. You don't actually take into consideration what your stop loss will be, what your risk reward ratio will be, you just jump into that trade. Now, that is actually a fear of missing out. Another aspect in which I actually warned you guys against is that, okay, probably you've already sent your pending order around this zone, then price is about to get to the, that zone and did not really get to that zone, then price is now going higher. Some of you will just jump into that trade and will you, you, you will still put your stop loss below this area this will give you a very wide range of stop loss and your risk word ratio as planned or as thought in this course will not actually be effective as you actually ought to. And that's why most of you will actually be frustrated, you'll be depressed because things are not working out the way it should. The another kind of uh, FOMO is that, okay, price has already got into your zone. Before you got there, right, price is already moving away and price has already got into somewhere around this area. You just jump into that trade without even considering how, how, uh, how many pips your stop loss will be and if price will still retrace back into that zone again for you to catch a good trade. So those are fear of missing out, right? Those are fear of missing out. So this is actually not a best decision to make as a trader, right? You should not, you should learn a way, right, to, to, to actually suppress um, I mean, your emotions to the, rate, to, the, to the point that you will not be able to actually jump into a trade. Right, because that is just jumping into a trade, right? You you see you just see a market the price of the of that particular pair is just is just going higher and you just jump into that trade. You think that oh uh, you uh, so far you cannot catch it at the beginning of of that move at that particular zone of interest. Then you think that you you can jump at the middle. No, that is actually a bad a bad trading skill. Right, and most of the time, right, you might actually be successful in the first one, the second one, the third one, but the fourth one you might actually eat you out. So, in this particular aspect, your risk word ratio will not be as effective because, based on what I taught you, the minimum risk word ratio that you guys can actually look out for is one to five risk word ratio. But for me, I will always go for one to ten risk word ratio because I know that my stop loss can be somewhere around two peeps or one peep or even less than that in some cases. So when I have one peep or two peep as my stop loss, then one to 10 risk reward ratio should not be, uh, should not be hard for me to get, All right? So this implies that if I actually see this trade has already moved away and my pending order is not activated, and I just think I can actually jump in, in, in between the line or in between the price of, of, the, of the particular pair, then my trading plan would not be followed again. And something that is actually very important as a trader is that you have to plan your trade and trade your plan. So you have to decide that in your heart that if price has left your zone, then you are not going to trade that pair because it is better for you not to trade than for you to trade and lose that money. So always have it in your mind that, okay, if I take this trade now, I'm going to lose money. Or ask yourself, what will it cost me to wait? Right. So what we cost you to wait and be patient is what is um, is is nothing that shows that you are not going to pay for anything that shows you are just going to wait. Is it that you did not take that? I, I, I mean, is it that that trade eventually get to your take profit and you did not take that trade? That shows you did not make money. And number two, you did not lose money. But if you are going to jump into that trade, that shows you have a very high risk um uh, exposure in that particular aspect how uh, what do i mean by this that shows that this trade might eventually come back to your zone right and actually stop you out with a very large stop loss 
right, with the Maryland stop loss. And if you have actually waited for it to come back to this zone, probably for you to get to this higher zone that I've already marked, right, probably let me just make use of some of my, my flashcard, right, to explain that. Let me use some of my flashcard so that I will not actually be speaking out of the blues, right? No, just some minutes and let me use. Okay. Just pay attention as I share my screen. Now, looking at this, I can see that this is my rejection zone. Then this is actually a trade for me to buy this pair from, right? I mean, to sell this pair from. Then I've already seen a reversal pattern one, two, three, right? Then price came back to my entry point at this particular zone. Then I've already calculated, okay, if this is actually a break of structure, this is a lower low here, then if price should get to this zone, then I should have a two pip stop loss. So with that calculation, I know that targeting this low will give me one to 20. Now, I use different different ranges of, I mean, of, stop, I mean, of target. Now, my first target might actually be one to 10. If there is no liquidity zone that this market is actually coming to catch, then I will be targeting one to 10. But if there is a liquidity zone, Right, and you can see this is just M15 and intraday, so it will be very fast for markets to really come to this zone. So that shows my one to 20 is actually very, very easy. Then you can see we still have some movement down there, but I am going to take my profit, but that's not actually what, what I'm talking about now. Now, you look at this particular zone, this is actually a rejection zone for me to take my entry, but unfortunately for me, I mean, I'm just talking about if Peradventure, I'm, I'm unable to take my trade here. I'm unable to set my, my, my limit order here. Then I've already seen this price has already gone to this area. Now, assuming I just jump into this trade, that shows that my stop loss will be as wide because I'll be looking at this particular eye to be my stop loss zone, right? Then this particular low that I've already targeted here, this particular zone here as my take profit zone. That shows that this particular one to 20 risk word ratio that I've, that I've already projected and already planned for this trade would not work out. So that shows I have not trade my plan. So it will be fair of missing out for me to jump into this trade in the middle of the range. So it will be advisable for me to wait for price to come to my entry zone, then I can as well activate the trade there. Now, and I actually be lucky, probably I did not set the, limit, the limit order here. I might be lucky that when I switch to this particular pair, it is when this price is reacting to it on this particular zone. It has not left the zone, it just retested that zone. So, so I can use a market execution at that particular point in time. But I'm not going to use market execution again if the price has already left that zone. So that will be you waiting. And you know, one of the virtue of a good trader is patience. Now, what, what killed most traders nowadays, not even nowadays, right from the time that trading has actually emerged, not even trading in every business world is actually patient. You are built in not to think why, not to think thoroughly concerning the particular business idea you actually want to embark into or the particular uh, uh, product you really want to purchase. This also also is applicable to, for, to forex because you need to be patient for your for the price to actually come to your zone before you trade, right? So one thing, one skills that you guys need to exercise if you really want to balance between your excitement and your fear is that you must you must have that high level of of patience, right? That should you must be very 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 patient, right? If not, then you will just see that you are jumping into every trade that just come your way. So always plan your trade and trade the plan. And how do you execute this is by having that patience and for you to remove all every emotions to your heart. Now, I always tell people something, right? This is actually what I've said to you guys also uh, over and over again, that I've come to a point in time that I've already killed my emotions. Though I still have that because that's why I will enter the trade that's actually wrong because I also do enter a wrong trade, right? So sometimes, and that's actually with the next point I'm coming back to, excitement. Now, what excitement would do is that you will now feel like a professional, right? 
a professional trader should not always think like you should not always feel like a professional at all time because that might actually make you to complicate some of the rules that you've already stated for yourself because you will think that you are now the lord and the god over those over those over those trade this always happens to me sometimes i can say sometimes because i'm also human so i would think that oh so when I'm, a, I'm the one that is this concept i'm the one that actually uh, bring about this concept okay i can i can also trade it this way so with that particular mindset i will just jump into that trade not knowing the effect that that trade is actually going to is going to bring back to me so it is better for me to exercise patience for market to really show me his ends then i can as well follow it as i have already planned it so excitement will actually make you to enter into a wrong trade and excitement will make you to jump into a trade that you are not expected to jump into right because you will think that you're already an expert then you can trade that trade as you really want to so with 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 your with your with your mind being open and with you not being excited on a particular pair and you not even being afraid or being fearful when you are trading then that will actually make you a very awesome trader why? Because you are going to wait. You are not going to have fear of missing out, and you are not going to be. You are not going to be too excited to enter a pair. So the best characteristics of a trader, or the best uh, uh, traits that a, a trader will actually exhibit, is patience and the ability for you to control your fear and your excitement. So. You already know that you already understand this course. You already understand everything that you know. Do you know that I, I just discovered because some of you that I, I earlier have an interaction with, I discovered that because you have already, you already think in your mind that you already understand this course very well, then you can do and you can mark up charts and I, I will say that, okay, this is actually perfect. Do you know that you are actually highly vulnerable, right? Why did I say you're actually highly vulnerable? Because you actually be just be full of yourself to the point that you can actually at the same time kill your trading career how will you kill this by actually making so much errors why because you are now fond of yourself you are now proving over confidence in trading then you will actually lose more trade than you can actually think of so a best trader will actually be humble to himself, right? And you will not be fond of yourself. You will not think that you actually know it. And that is why I actually my, my, uh, make it mandatory for every one of you to actually have a trading plan. Then it is better for you to just paste that into your trading room if you actually have one. Then paste, there are actually some, some things are actually placed on my table, on my wall, just for me to see, right? And when I'm trading, I know that that's actually what has actually helped me to control myself a little bit because I'm, I'm also still humans, right? So you, you're actually going to paste all those particular rules, right? And paste them. So when you're trading, you just ask yourself, is this rule meant? So before you enter that trade, all right, you ask yourself, okay, is this how I should trade it, right? And even after you have already taken that trade, after, after that tra tra trade has been after that trade has been taken, then ask yourself that same question. Should you get out of that trade or you should remain in that trade? Don't assume that, oh, let me just leave it. Maybe this will work out. No, don't assume. If you eventually find out that this is actually a bad trade, then get out of it immediately. Get out of it immediately. Not minding what the result might be because at the end of the day, it might actually give you about one to 100 risk reward ratio, then you will not actually blame yourself for that. But you will know that you've actually done the right thing. See, when you are following a rule, right, consistently, you are going to be consistent in your profit. But if you are just jumping all around, then you will not be able to be, uh, be focused in your trading. Now, there is something called trading like a casino. You know how a casino will trade, right? They have a simple rules they're actually following. And no matter how their, 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 their client actually, or, I mean, is actually very smart, no matter how smart the person is, the casino will still be making profit. Why? Because they know that they, you cannot actually be smart as they as they are, right? In terms of their rules and terms of how they're actually going to present their figure to you. So one thing you literally need to understand is that you need to trade like an individual that doesn't have an emotion, even though you are human and you actually do have an emotion. You, are, you need to learn how to trade without fear, right? And even as excitement. Then at the same time, patience. So this will control for your 
over trading, right? And your confidence and even the fear of missing out that you already stated in the first instance. So patience is actually the most important thing. Wait for your zone, wait for your rules to actually unfold itself to you, then follow your plan, right? If price has already moved away from your zone, don't trade. Just tap yourself, even though when you're actually tempted to open that trade, slap yourself, if need be, right? Punish yourself. I actually have, uh, I, I guess it was composite that actually, actually went against this rule, then he told me that because of that, he have to punish himself by taking a very far distance run. Right, I have to run for a very far distance. But well, unfortunately for him, right, he was knocked down by a car. <laughs> so is that also a, a, a reward? I mean, a punishment to his to 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 his bad uh, to his bad habit, maybe. But that's 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 actually not from God anyway. But um, you should know that he actually punished himself so that you would not do that again. You can at, at the same time do that for yourself. Just punish yourself. You can just say that okay, I'm I'm going to take it fast because of this. Right, I'm going to punish myself because of what I've done, right? Or I'm going to report myself to Allah. And you know that when you report yourself to me, I will surely shout on you, right? You know that. So you can just take a punishment that will actually make you to be disciplined in everything you do. So discipline, discipline yourself in trading is actually very, 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 very important. So a disciplined trader is actually the best trader. So a disciplined trader will not actually count, um, uh, will not actually uh, will not actually take fear into consideration and also excitement, then a disciplined trader will be patient enough for, for, for his rules to actually unfold before before he's actually going to, before he will take any trade. So a disciplined trader will wait for his rules right to be fulfilled before he's actually going to trade. So this is what we guide you. This is what we caution you. This is what we actually lead you into the very, very uh, place that you really want to see yourself in your trading career, right? So don't shy away from all those bad habits that they're doing. You have to punish yourself for them, right? Punish yourself. Take a break, right? Don't do, and do what you think that when you do it, you actually know that, oh, yes, I'm punishing myself. Don't eat, right? Just decide not to take any, any luxurious things, right? Just make sure that you find a way to discipline yourself for the bad habit that you've actually exercised. So the, what are we talking about today? We're talking about trading psychology and how you can actually manage your trade. So we actually started with the aspect of your, your, in your taking of trades, uh, planning your trade and trading your plan. Then we talk about patience, we talk about discipline, we talk about your emotions and we said this can also be categorized into two, uh, two aspects which is actually a fear, uh, I mean fear and excitement. And I told you what fear can do and what excitement can do. So excitement is even more dangerous than fear. Excitement is more dangerous than fear because of excitement and because you actually, um, uh, you actually confidence over what you are doing, then you can actually risk more than what you are not expected to do. So even fear is even better than excitement. So excitement is actually very good. I mean, very, very bad. Now, I remember what my mentor, not a trading mentor, as a spiritual mentor actually told me. He said, the, the most valuable life in the, in the life of a man is actually when it's actually very comfortable, right? When you're actually very comfortable, then you actually don't know what to do. Then you're actually doing things that are very useless. But that is actually the best time for you to now prepare for the worst. So that's the best time for you to actually equip yourself to actually be better. So don't be vulnerable because you actually um, uh, you are now an expert, or you can actually see the market clearly. No, make sure that all your rules are actually still being followed. So the more you keep trading simple, the more you actually remain consistent. So don't complicate a simple thing, right? Don't complicate it. So and don't complicate your mind too. So this is actually a secret to a profitable life. Don't forget what you talk about: fear and excitement. Learn not to trade with fear and not learn not to trade with excitement. I can see some of you because you're actually getting it, you are making profit. Oh, I made 30% of my account this, this week. Oh, I, at the end of the month, some of you actually made 100%, some of you made 80%. Then you actually think that you have now arrived. No, this is just the beginning of your journey, and you need to be extra and extremely careful, right? Of your, what you do, or else all the profits you have gained then you would not be able to keep them any longer. You are going to lose them to the market, then you'll be frustrated and be depressed, then you begin from square one again. 
So it is better for you to control your emotion. Stay true with it, right? With what you have learned. When price is not at your zone, don't trade. When you can't find a clear, just like what I discussed with you. Now look at this is an impulsive move. Then this is actually a retracement in a compressed manner. So with this, you know that, okay, you are expecting something good. Then your reversal pattern also, you can see this three eight. Then you can also see your market structure being given you a clearer zone. Then you know that, okay, this is actually going to be a best zone for me. Calculate the stop loss. This is one minute time frame. This is just two peep. Then you, uh, you know that, okay, um, I'm going to risk to one uh, percent of my account with just these two people, then my target is this nearest low, which is actually one to twenty risk reward ratio, which can eventually give you twenty percent of your account in just how many minutes? Just few minutes. If you calculate it very well, that should be about how many minutes? Not less than an hour that this really happened. Twenty percent of your account and actually out of the market. So this is as simple as ABC. Just make it your plan, part of your plan. Then follow this squarely. Then, as you can see, what um, Matthew right already gave to us here. Yeah, these are actually our rules, right? These are rules. Then this is actually what you can follow, right? We have all these rules being stated, right? So with this, you see what is your bias time frame? If your bias time frame is this, okay, what is the market structure of that bias time frame? So this is your bias direction, and you know that you really want to buy. So are you going to refine your OB? Right? Is there any liquidity grab taking over your bias time frame? So all those things is actually what you've discussed based on the nine rules that I actually give to you. So you guys can actually go back to those rules because those are the rules that were stated here and how you can follow them. So in your setup time frame, so what is your setup time frame? Is it M15? Then is there any liquidity grab? Then is it a source pattern now? I've already we've already changed this to what now to um to market structure one, which can also be in that source manner or the inverse manner. So the entry pattern, are you going to refine that? So entry style number, how many? So this actually means how many, um, how many trades are you going to open on that single pair, right? Then entry style, is there a test of the source? So your, your source should be refined for you to get a, a sharp entry, right? Or a tight stop loss. So and I believe that this has actually been made so far. I've actually not had stop loss as wide as 12 pips anyway, but this is still cool. You can see the risk reward ratio based on what we are doing before, right, is 36. I believe that it's going to make, it has not been back into trading. So probably when it's back, it should give us another uh, another template of this. So we have risk reward ratio, right, the take profit then risk reward ratio. You can see, so is it a winner, is it a loss? you can actually have this particular template to document your trade, right? So probably when all this is actually adjusted based on the rules that we have, then those, these are actually our rules anyway. So you can still make use of this to document your trade and you give a remark. Is it your PC trade that you took? Is it all those things is actually what you can make a remark for here. Then you can go back to it at the end of the week to do a review of the trade that you've taken. So with this, if your trade are not, are not, I mean, if those rules are not met, then you know that you are not going to take your trade, right? So this is you just documenting your trade, journaling your trade so that you can actually follow them and know why you took such a trade. So I hope that is clear and I believe that you're actually clear with that. So one thing that we should stood out for you in this particular section is for you to be a disciplined trader then a disciplined trader will be a patient trader. A patient trader will, will not consider fear and excitement. He, he will always allow his rules to play and for him to trade based on his rule, right? He will not give place for fear, which is actually fear of missing out and also overconfidence, right? You will not allow that to set in into your trading. Then also you will learn how to kill your emotion learn how to trade like a robot right right so just like what i, I always tell some of you that oh, that actually you have already you are already done with your demo stage then you already want to move to your live account i've already seen the result in your demo trade then i can i will tell you that the same way you have traded with that same rules that i've given to you that you have traded your your demo account 
that is the same way you should transfer it to your life accounts because there should not be a difference in the way you trade your demo and the way you trade your your your, your life now you know some some people when they want to trade demo right they will open a demo of a million dollar and they know that they don't have more than one thousand dollars to trade so that's actually out of place and that is one of the reasons why i discourage some of you in trading this fcmo all right why? Because they are going to give you an account of probably fifty thousand dollars, right? But you, you can't even trade an account of one thousand dollars or even five hundred dollars, and you are taking up an account of fifty thousand dollars. Do you know that that is actually going to affect you psychologically? Why? How will this affect you psychologically? Now, number one, you will be trading an account that is actually higher than what your financial status can actually carry at that particular moment, right? So when you see losses. Right, probably a loss is about probably two thousand dollars or let's say five thousand dollars. And uh, okay, that's like, that's actually too much. About five, uh, that's about ten percent of fifty thousand dollars. Let's say about one thousand dollars. And you know that you can even afford that one thousand dollars. That one thousand dollars is not even up to, uh, is not even up to five percent. But you are already afraid. You're already scared. Oh, you are going to lose this challenge. And that particular tension that you're actually trading for a challenge, they are actually trading for someone that we eventually give you profit at the end of the month will not even give you a same mind in trading so the first thing you need to do learn to trade for yourself then if you have 500 dollars accounts the same ability that you can go that 500 dollars account into 600 dollars account you can as well go that 600 dollars account into one thousand dollars account and you can as well trade that one thousand dollars account into ten thousand dollars account then go let your Emotion grows steadily, right, with your accounts, right? Because when you have a five hundred dollars account, you know you are trading with that. Now, by the time you now have six hundred dollars account, it's not actually much compared to five hundred dollars account. By the time you have one thousand dollars account, is not is the difference is not as much as that. So you grow in line with with uh, with, with, with the money. Your emotions, your mindset actually grow in line with it, so that when you are now trading a million dollars account, you will not actually be freaked. Right, because it's actually what you've actually traded to that level. And if you are an individual that's actually buoyant enough to actually fund a $1 million account, that's just saying a loss of about $10,000 account should not freak you. So it's actually saying for you to think wisely. So that is why I don't actually encourage that FTMO because I think that it is not for a, a trader that is just coming up. Even a balance, like you can't actually ask me to go and take it up now because how much did that actually, how much, did they, how much will they give to me that I can actually afford to actually deposit and actually trade with? How much? I don't actually know the details about them, but I don't actually need it. The company I'm trading for actually, I, have, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I can actually say that out. So you should learn to grow together with your money. Learn to grow together with your money. Learn to go together with your money and let your emotions actually be built over time with that. So FTMO is not an option for you. Trade for yourself, grow your money, then you will see how that money you're actually looking for outside will actually belongs to you. Are you following? So one of the reasons why I don't actually give signal that I don't also give, um, uh, uh, I, I don't actually manage a general account because the account I'm managing is actually a company account whereby the investor cannot see really see what is happening. So probably if, if the account is about, about about probably five million dollars and I'm having probably a, a, a one or two percent drawdown, then with that you know an investor can just be shouting and not knowing that okay that's just a two percent of the account. Probably your money is on there is not even up to that. So with that, it's actually going to create tension on me and I will not be able to have a same mindset in actually trading it. So that's why I prefer to trade uh, this, uh, I mean, secretly, right? And for anyone not to know what I'm actually doing, I know that everything that's actually going to happen is actually between me and that account. As the account is growing, I'm the one that's actually going to follow it. Then at the end of the month, if, I mean, or at the end of their, or their tenure of investment, if their, if their investment is actually due to be withdrawn, they can actually take their money with their profit. So I know there is no tension on me. I know there is no anybody that will actually need to ask me as the account fairing. They just know that at the end of the month, they, I mean, at the end of their tenure, probably quarterly or probably uh, in the uh, in six months, they're going to get their profit. The same thing with, 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 with Signal. So those things, you just need to know what will actually create tension for you. Because anytime I send a signal and people actually take the trade, probably that's now the bad trade that I sent. Because as a trader, you need to know that you are going to have a bad trade 
I need to have a good trade. So if I have a bad trade, probably that particular setup that I sent is a bad trade. I'm going to feel bad because I've already caused some other people to lose money, even though I shouldn't. But that's just how my, uh, that's actually how I am. So I, I try to prevent all those things so that I will not be emotional in terms of my trading. So just like what I told you earlier, I tried as, I tried as much as possible to kill everything that will actually make me to be emotional and for me not to have a sane mind in terms of trading because this is money that we are talking about and you know people's reaction to money. And that's why most people cannot actually link the relationship between their demo account with their, uh, with their life accounts. So the answer of what I'm saying is that if you actually want to start Probably you are not trading life account now. You are trading demo account. Don't start with $10,000. If you know that you cannot even afford $100, don't start with that. There's nobody that you're actually trying to, to impress, right? Showing your lot size, showing your number of accounts. Why are you trying to impress? Nobody. No, that is why I don't actually display my profit or my loss or whatever. I have losses too. <laughs> I have losses and I actually make profit. Right, so but I don't display such. I prefer to display, um, to display my charts and to give a reason why I've actually taken those those trade. If you have actually been with me for the time I've actually started, you will know. I'm actually talking up to, to, to the free guys now. You will know the reason why those trades were actually taken. Then the, the student, the mentorship student, if you see my flashcard, you already know why those trades were taken because there is no flashcard that you will see that doesn't follow the rules that I've actually taught you. Are you following? So there is nothing that you're going to see that doesn't follow the rules. And if they follow the rules and you can say that, okay, this is actually a systematic way of trading, it follows the same pattern, then that shows anybody can repeat the same action and get the same results, right? But showing a uh, um, uh, number of money that I have in my account, it doesn't make sense to me anyway. I used to do that before, probably <laughs> earlier, uh, 2019, I actually stopped that. It doesn't make sense to me because how, why will I be displaying my wealth? Why would I be explain how much I'm actually making to the public? Now, everybody should actually live a conservative life. You should not display yourself. Even up to now, right, up to now, I can't remember the time, last time I actually upload anything. If I'm actually doing anything, you will never see it. Even people that are actually on my WhatsApp status, they don't even know what I'm doing. They don't even know, right? They just know, okay, probably just meet in the business world, have a meeting, and that's actually the end. They don't even know how much I'm earning. I just love to live that discreet life. Probably <laughs> why most of you, would not have actually uh, probably seen my face. I'm very sure I'm actually going to reveal what I am to you. We have actually not seen my face before. I just love a discreet life. I just love a life that nobody actually knows who I am. No, I'm just going my way. I just want to live that secret life that nobody actually fancy. That's why we have many millionaires that are even richer than those people that we actually are claimed that are actually millionaires today. But you just have that in, that particular introvert personality that they don't actually want to be revealed to the world too. So it's actually a very simple way People that live, we have people that are living flamboyantly, like people that are living a very luxurious life. They, that's actually their own choice. Everybody have their own personality to themselves and how, how they should display their things. So you should know when and the account size to actually trade in your demo accounts. So don't impress anyone by opening a demo account of $100,000, whereby you know that you cannot even afford to, to deposit $10 in your account. You are not impressing anyone. So if you are impressing anyone, then you're actually going to, you know, I've actually learned something that you, you should learn to be dead to the praises, right? Right, to, and, and to the sensuals of man, right? To the, both the criticism and the sensuals, that shows their praises and their criticism. You should learn to actually die to it, right? But if you actually carry away with the praises of men, then you actually not going, you, you not go far because whatever things you are doing is actually going to build on their praises, but anytime because man are actually dynamic, right? Man changes anytime from now. Most of you that are saying, Oh, Allah, you are the best. Now you can find another person that is actually better than me, and your song will actually change. I have seen that happen, so I'm not freaked by all those things. So you just sing praises for me, is good. If you sing bad of me, that is also good at the same time because I'm not moved by both. By both. So, as an individual, you need to learn, you, you need to learn how to be dead to the criticism of men and to the praises of men. So you are not enticing, you are not impressing anyone on social media or on even in your, in your environment or anything like that. Just live your life and be okay. Then live a good life. That's actually the best. So trade wisely, trade not to impress anyone, trade to actually make a living and not for the public display.
So I believe that this will actually help you to have a sane life. There's some, there will be actually be some times like, okay, for, for example, when I actually open, uh, open my, uh, my, my, my house, right? That she had just the, house, the new house there. I, I was actually thinking that, oh, should I post this thing? I just want to impress. But I just, I just thought to myself that, okay, what am I trying to impress? Who, who, who really am I trying, really trying to impress? After all, everybody will see it, right? And when they actually see the house, then they will say, oh, congratulations. And some people will actually even be, be, be eating you because of that. So why should I actually display myself to the world? It doesn't actually not make sense. It's just as if you're actually going in a trans, trans uh, uh, I mean, in, in a trans, I mean, public transport, then you actually stand up on the bus and you start announcing everything about yourself. That, okay, look at me, my name is this, then I, I have how many cars, I have how many, uh, this number of houses. That is actually the same way displaying your wealth, displaying who you are on the social media is because two people on the social media are not really your friends, right? They are not your friend. <laughs> we, we Facebook can actually call them Facebook friends, Instagram, Instagram followers, right? YouTube subscribers and all those terms that they're actually using. But they, are, you didn't, they don't really know you. So why are they, why are you trying to impress them? There's no reason for that. So you just live your life, be comfortable, right? And live a good life and do good to your men. So don't live a life to impress anyone. And that this alone will also help you to keep a sane mind in your, in your business, even your trading career. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So it's actually a very, very important thing that you guys should understand. So for today, we've actually come to the end of today's section, right? We're going to have another section where we will actually talk about how you can actually perfect your mindset and your reasoning in terms of your thinking, right? Your thinking pattern and how you actually see trading and the likes. We're going to have that in other sections for uh, for for you to understand clearly. All right. So I'm going to take questions, uh, but I will stop the recordings now so that uh, it will not be so long. It will not be a very long section. <laughs>